Hey there Unmaskers, welcome to my channel Unmask It Now. In today's video, we'll create an AWS managed Microsoft AD directory and then seamlessly domain join a Windows EC2 instance to that directory. Let's take a quick look at the architecture. The VPC in the AWS account has four subnets, namely the Bashin subnet, the Management subnet, the AD subnet 1 and AD subnet 2. The Bashin subnet, which is a public subnet, hosts a Bashin host instance, which is solely to log in to the AD management instance in the private subnet. We have two private subnets in two different availability zones for high availability, where we will launch the AWS managed Microsoft AD directory. The AWS managed Microsoft AD is an AWS directory service that lets you run Microsoft AD as a managed service in the AWS cloud. When you select and launch this directory type, it creates a highly available pair of domain controllers powered by Windows Server 2019, but connected by Elastic Network Interfaces or ENIs that are created in the VPC of your choice. Since it is a managed AWS service, the host monitoring and recovery, data replication, snapshots, and software updates are automatically configured and managed for you by AWS. Like any other AWS managed service, you can access your AWS managed Microsoft directory using AD administration tools from an EC2 instance that is joined to the AD. In this case, it is the AD management instance, which is launched in the management subnet that you see on the screen. I'm currently logged into my AWS account in the Sydney region as my administrator user OS. I've already created the VPC, the public and the private subnets that's needed for the purpose of this demo. And I've also launched a Bashin host in the public subnet. So let's take a quick look at this VPC and the subnets that I've created. So let me switch over to the VPC console. So the VPC that we'll be using for the purpose of this demo is the Corp VPC with this VPC ID. And I've created the subnets the Bashin subnet, which is a public subnet in the availability zone A. And we've got the AD management subnet, which is a private subnet in the same availability zone. And you can see with the route tables that it has a route to the NAT gateway. As for the AD subnets, AD subnet 1 and 2, you can see that they are created across two different availability zones, AP South East 2A and 2B. And these will be the subnets that we will use for deploying the managed directory. The AD subnet, subnet 1 and subnet 2 only have the local routes for the VPC and they do not have any outbound internet access through the NAT gateway as we do not require that for the directory communication. So let's now proceed to create the directory. To do so, I'm going to switch over to the directory services console and then click on setup directory. We do have four options for directory services here, but for the purpose of this demo, we will be creating the AWS managed Microsoft AD directory and then click on next. You can see that the domain controllers will be running on Windows Server 2019. We have two editions that we can choose from and you can see the details to define which edition works for your choice. A good decision point would be to see the number of directory objects that you would be creating in your directory to choose between the two editions. So we are going to select the standard edition of the directory for this demo and I'll provide the directory DNS name or the fully qualified domain name for our directory. For this example, I'm going to name it as corp.local and provide a NetBIOS name. This is optional, but it's preferred to give the first part of your domain name as your NetBIOS name. So I'm going to give the NetBIOS name as corp and then provide a description for this directory. I'm just going to put the same description as that as my NetBIOS name, but you can give any description of your choice. So next we switch to the admin password. Note that to perform operational management of your directory, AWS does have exclusive control of the accounts with enterprise administrator and domain administrator privileges. This includes exclusive control of the AD administrator account. During the directory creation, AWS will create a directory administrator account with the username that is admin and we specify the password here during the creation of the directory. Note that this account does not have any domain administrator or enterprise administrator privileges, but it rather has a delegated set of permissions. And I will link those permissions in the description below for you to note. We can later see that this account is created in the users OU of our directory. So let me go ahead and give a password for this directory admin account. And once that I've confirmed the password, let's go ahead and click next. So here we're going to provide the VPC where the directory will be created. You do require at least two subnets in two different availability zones that you need to provide here. 
So I'm going to select the VPC that we created, that is the Corp VPC, and select the two AD subnets that we have created. So I'm going to select AD subnet 1, followed by AD subnet 2. And here you can see the default initial AD site name that will be created in AD sites and services for this directory. Let's go ahead and click on next. So with all the details provided, I'm then going to go ahead and create this directory. It could take about 15 to 20 minutes for the directory creation to happen. And you can see that the status of the directory will be creating during that state. Once the status has switched to available, that's when you can actually access the directory and perform the directory administration tasks against this directory. While the directory is being created, the next action that I would want to show you is to actually seamlessly domain join an EC2 instance to this directory. Since this directory is a managed directory, you do not have access to actually log into the domain controllers created by this directory. Rather, you can join an EC2 instance to this directory and manage this directory using the AD administration tools. So before we do that, let's set the prerequisites for creating the AD management instance. So I'm going to create the IAM role with the necessary permissions to seamlessly domain join the instance to the directory. And we'll also create a security group for that instance. So to do that, I'm going to switch to the IAM console. And click on roles and then click on create a role. I'm going to select EC2 as the use case and then click next. AWS provides two managed policies that you can use when performing seamless domain join of EC2 instance. I'll list the two managed policies here. So the two policies are the SSM managed instance score and the SSM directory service access policy. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. With the two policies selected, I'm going to go ahead and click on next. So I'm going to call this policy EC2 domain join and then click on create the role. Now that the role is created, let's go ahead and create the EC2 instance and we'll create the security group while creating the instance. So I'm going to click on instances tab. We do need to wait for the directory to be available before we can launch and seamlessly domain join this instance to the directory. I've given it about 20 minutes and now I can see that the directory is reporting as active. We're now in a position to launch our AD management instance and seamlessly domain join it to this directory. Before we do that, I do want to go through some of the details about the directory. So this is the directory ID that's created for corp.local. Clicking on the directory ID, I can see the networking details as well as some of the directory settings. We then switch over to this tab and you can see that by default, you have two domain controllers that are created for this directory with the corresponding IP addresses, one in each of the subnets. So let me switch over to the EC2 console so I can show you the two interfaces of the directory that's created. So switching to the EC2 console and going to the network interfaces tab. You can see that there are two interfaces that have the security group with the directory ID underscore controllers. So these happen to be the two interfaces of the directory. A good way to also identify that is to read the description of the interfaces and you can see that it's written as AWS created network interface for the directory with the directory ID. Clicking on the interface, you can also see the private IP for each of these interfaces. And this also happens to be the private IP that is reported in the directory services console. If you click on the security group that is attached to these interfaces, you can see that by default, AWS creates the security group with the security group rules that is needed for Active Directory communication. Note that the outbound rules are by default only allowing the directory security group for all traffic. So if you do need to allow outbound traffic from the directory, you will need to modify the security group to allow the traffic accordingly. So now that we have seen the details of the directory, let me switch over to the EC2 console to now create the AD management instance. So clicking on the instance tab, I'm going to go ahead and click on launch instance. Let's name the instance as AD management. I'm going to select windows and leave it with the default 2022 base image. I'm going to leave the instance type and select the key pair that I already have created. Let me switch over to the Corp VPC, which is where I will launch this instance. But for the subnet, I'm going to select the AD management subnet, which does have outbound access to NAT gateway. 
so that it can communicate with the AWS Systems Manager endpoints for seamless domain join. So I will be creating a new security group here. So I'm going to call this the AD Management SG. For the RDP traffic, we will be allowing inbound RDP traffic from the Bastion host instance. So let me just duplicate this tab so I can get the IP of the Bastion host instance here. Selecting the instance, I'm going to get the private IP of this instance and provide that as the source for RDP traffic. Once that's configured, we need to expand the advanced details where we will be providing the IAM role as well as the directory ID so that we can perform seamless domain join. So to do so, you can see that under the domain join directory, click on the drop down and you can see that the AWS managed active directory that is cop.local is listed here with its directory ID. So let's select that. And then for the IAM instance profile, we will then select the EC2 domain join role that we created previously. So this role does have the necessary permissions to perform the domain join operations using AWS Systems Manager. Once we've selected the domain join directory and the IAM instance profile, let's go ahead and launch the instance. Let me switch back to the instances tab and wait for the instance state to report as running with the two by two checks passed. Let me refresh the console. I can see that the AD management instance is now running with the two by two status checks passed. So let's take a look at what the seamless domain join process actually does. So let's switch over to the systems manager console and then click on the state manager tab. You can see that there is an association ID with the document name that's AWS config underscore domain with the domain ID and the domain name. It reports the last execution time and you can see that the status is currently pending. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to see if the status reports a success. While we wait for this association to be running, I'm going to click on the association ID and then we can take a look at the document that this association actually runs against the instance. You can see the content of the document and it uses the AWS domain join plugin that's provided and provides the three properties for that plugin, which is the directory ID, the directory name and the DNS IP addresses for the domain, which is auto populated when you select the directory ID while launching the instance. Switching back to the association ID, you can see the resources for the association ID. So you can see that the resource ID and the association status has now reported a success. So let's take a look at the output, which says one out of one plugin, since there's only one plugin that's AWS domain join, and that's reported as success. The execution history also lists the execution ID against that particular instance. So let's head back to the association that's created. And since that's reported as a success, I'm now going to try to log into the instance using the corp admin account. To do so, I'm going to switch over to the Bastion host and try to log in to the AD management instance that we just created. So let me grab the private IP of the AD management instance. In order to connect using the directory admin account, I do need to provide the username using the syntax netbios name backslash admin, and then click on connect. And I'm prompted for the directory admin password. So this is the password that we provided when we created the directory. I'm going to click on OK. And you can see with just the RDP certificate, you can see that the host name of the remote computer does have a suffix cop.local, which indicates that the machine is domain joined. So I'm going to then click on yes. Now that we are connected to the AD management instance, I'm going to run a partial command so that we can install the directory administration tools. So let me open the partial ISC console. So we're now going to use this command, which is install hyphen windows feature. We're going to install the two remote server administration tools, the AD tools, as well as the DNS server tools. And we're going to include all the sub feature and the management tools that's included as part of this windows feature. So let me go ahead and run that. Now 
you can see that the AD tools and the DNS server tools are installed and no restart is required for installing these tools. Note that you can also run this command to install the tools while the instance is being launched as part of the user data script. If you were to do that, this would be the syntax of the command that you need to provide in the user data section while launching the instance. So with the feature installed, let's go ahead and try to connect to our directory using the Active Directory tools. First, I'm going to launch the Active Directory users and computers console. To do so, I'm going to type dsa.msc. And you can see that it's connected to corp.local, which is our directory. You can see that AWS creates an organizational unit or OU to store all the AWS related groups and accounts. The name of this OU will be the same as the NetBIOS name that you provided when creating the directory. In my case, since the domain was corp.local and I provided the NetBIOS name as corp, you can see that the name of my OU is corp. Note that this OU is owned by AWS and contains all of your AWS directory related objects and you do have full control over this OU. Under this OU, you do have two child OUs by default by the name of computers and users. This contains the computer accounts for all the instances joined to your directory. In this case, since we've joined the AD management instance to the directory, we have the computer account of the AD management instance. And under the users OU, we have an admin account, which is the default directory admin account that was provided when creating the directory that's present within this OU. Note that any other directory related objects, for example, if you were creating a new user or an OU would need to be done within the corp OU and you do not have access outside of this corp OU to create any other users or other directory related objects. So let me quickly show you that. So if I were to go to the default users tab and right click on this, you can see that there is no new tab for you to create any users. However, if I were to go to the users under the corp OU, you can see that I'm now provided with a new tab where I can create new users, groups, or OUs, or any other directory related objects. Let's also open the DNS management snap in since we've installed the DNS server tools. You can see that it prompts you for which computer you want to connect. So I'm going to provide the domain name corp.local. You can see that we now have the DNS management console for our directory where you can see the records that have been created for the directory. So in this case, we have two records, which is the records for the domain controllers of our directory. And we also have a host A record for the AD management instance that we create. Lastly, I do want to show you that besides performing the directory management tasks by using the snappets, you can also reset the user password from the AWS directory console. So let me quickly switch over to the directory console. And if you click on the directory under actions, you do have an option to say reset user password. You do have permissions to change the password of the default admin account or any other users that you create as part of your directory. So this covers how to create an AWS managed Microsoft AD directory and how to seamlessly domain join an AD management instance to the directory. So you can administer the directory using directory administration tools. Thanks for watching. For more such content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Unmask It Now. Until next time.